Well, this is that magic time of the day in these places. At the reef. We're sitting here looking at Australia. It's meant to be blowing below 10 knots, isn't it? Variable, Variable to, 10 to, knots. to 10 knots, but uh, it's not. Well, we're anchored. This place is like being in a David Attenborough documentary. There are thousands of birds. It's just incredible. Booby chicks just are crazy. They're as big as their parents and you've never seen fluffiness like it. Well, this is one of the most amazing places we've been to. It's just so cool. This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44, built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. And this is the story of our long overdue boat refit. Wait, this is the story of a mid-refit sailing adventure. Welcome along for the ride. Well, here we are at Sudbury Cay. Still a bit lumpy, but the wind's going to die down tonight, so it will only get better. On the Great Barrier Reef. Well, it's been an interesting night. It was a little bit stormy. We battened down the hatches, bobbed up and down for a bit. Overnight, the wind's dropped. And there's a fishing mission going on. Mom. What's happening, boys? Look. Look. Oh, my God. Barry. Barry? And Barry's been Hang half on, Josh, eaten. Don't bring it on close. Oh, my goodness. I can hardly lift this. So Barry was attacked by a shark. By a six foot shark. Two gulps and that was it. It was like over half his body was gone. Wow. Poor Barry. I don't think there's any saving him. Wow. So that's what a uh, shark bite looks like. Well, this tiny bit of sand, this little K, little islet has suddenly become very popular. So there's a bunch of jet skis have turned up, a fishing boat that's pulled in. Here's another one. Incoming, another two. Looks like it's a popular spot. It's so close to Cairns. It's only 10 miles from Fitzroy Island, another 15 to Cairns, so 20 to 25 all up. And I guess when it calms off and it's um, in the holiday season as well, it must get super busy. Well, this is Sudbury Cay, deserted last night and early this morning. And then it's very quickly filled up with boats. I expect they'll all go home. We were just speaking to someone. They said, oh, everyone tends to go about two or three o'clock so they can get back in daylight. So I guess we'll have it to ourselves then. There's some turtle tracks here. That pretty much go across the island or islet Cay. It's like the turtle came up out of the water, was maybe looking for somewhere to lay. Maybe didn't find it. And then went all the way to the sea. Of course, the sand cave was beautiful and fun to walk around. But what we were really interested in was the underwater landscape. So we went to take a look.
this is that magic time of the day in these places when everybody who's come out for the day, all the day trippers have gone home and you get it to yourself virtually. There's three other boats here but one's leaving and the other two will probably stay for the night and we're going to go ashore to the Cay. beautiful place it did get busy in the day and the locals that we met said that it wasn't even that busy today compared to how busy it can get so that was a bit of an eye-opener for us that's Australia for you we're spoiled everything's so empty a lot of the time and we are close to a big city Cairns is the biggest city in tropical North Queensland and it's over there we're looking at it we're sitting here looking at Australia and it's no wonder that lots of people want to come out to a place like, like this it's beautiful into the marina which is what we are going to do now we're going into the Marlin marina and this is actually Josh's first time into Cairns by boat. What are you most looking forward to about Cairns then? Uh, tank Museum. Tank Museum. What are you most looking forward to about Cairns by Tank Museum. <laughs> I am most looking forward to Rusty's Market and specifically the Thai kitchen which is an awesome place to go for breakfast. They do the best Tom Yum soup. Coming into a marina means getting our dock lines ready, retrieving them from the deck bag, feeding them through the fair leads and securing the inboard ends on our deck cleats. It also means putting out fenders tied to our solid stainless handrail with a simple clove hitch, as well as swivelling the adjustable solar panels on the aft rails inboard. There's usually a channel to navigate down and traffic to contend with. And sometimes, like here, there's a warm welcome and helping hands waiting on the dock. The Marlin Marina is pretty much in the heart of Cairns, just a stone's throw from its tree-lined esplanade with its restaurants, bars and vibrant nightlife for all your after dark entertainment and its parks, lagoons, markets and tourist offerings for an array of things to do by day. As well as being a gateway city to the Great Barrier Reef, Cairns is also on the doorstep of a World Heritage listed ancient rainforest. Taking a train, sky rail or in our case hire car up to the Atherton Tablelands will transport you to a world of towering fig trees and tumbling waterfalls. Of course, the advantage to exploring in the wet season is that those waterfalls are really flowing. But the disadvantage? Well... So we just walked one and a half kilometres to uh, Barren Foot and the mist is clearing, actually. So you can just see them through there. the white out. Just one of those misty, raining days. 
Meanwhile, back in Cairns, Julian and Josh did get to go to the Tank Museum. Yes, that's actually a thing. In fact, the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum, as it's officially called, is the largest of its kind in the entire Southern Hemisphere, with over 200 armoured vehicles and guns on display. I got my Rusty's Markets fix, and specifically lashings of delicious food from our favourite Thai kitchen. Open from Friday to Sunday every week, Rusty's is a bit of a Cairns institution, and with just about every sort of fruit and veg you could possibly imagine, it's also a great place to reprovision. Fabulous though all this was, it wasn't the reason we had sailed all this way, and with a weather window now opening up, it was time to get back to the Great Barrier Reef. Well, the wind's come up, we're all romping along. I've just decided to have a little sleep. We'll just take advantage of the silence, hey babe? Yeah. <laughs> The peace and quiet. It's meant to be blowing below 10 knots, isn't it? Variable, Variable to, 10 to 10 knots, but uh, it's not. 15. We're not complaining. No. 10 to 3 arrival. Crank on sale, Peps. Not juice, is it? Not really. Important bird rookery, largest in the southern hemisphere apparently. Well, we're anchored. Meanwhile, I need to show you what Josh has been up to. Look at this, what have you made, darling? I made a Willie's Jeep and an artillery piece. Which you got from? The Tank Museum. Yay, well done. That's Lego, is it? Yeah. This place is like being in a David Attenborough documentary. There's just bird noise and we get birds flying overhead and boobies going skimming across the surface of the water and turns and it's amazing so we can't go ashore at the moment there's only a small roped area uh, that you're allowed to go in and even then that's only in between nine and three but it's pretty cool to sit here bobbing around on the boat and listen to it all and watch it all happen so that's what we're doing it's just incredible because it's nesting time and the booby chicks just are crazy. They're as big as their parents and you've never seen fluffiness like it. It's incredible. There's cans over there. Amazing isn't it, a place like this that you can see the mainland. This is closer to land than um, the Bait Reef is in the Whitsundays and Bait Reef is the closest bit of the Barrier Reef to the Whitsundays and it's about 25 miles offshore. So this is, I think, 22 miles offshore. We're at Michaelmas Cay, or Michaelmas, we're not sure which. And we're just about to go ashore at nine o'clock uh, is the time when you're allowed to go ashore and check out all the bird life in this amazing place. It's just like we're stepped into David Attenborough documentary. So mm. if we go. There she is, the good ship, brilliant too. We're not even into bird watching, but this is this place is amazing. Oh, look at the 
That is a big fat chick. Well, this is one of the most amazing places we've been to. It's just so cool. We're on Michaelmas Cay. Uh, there are thousands of birds of mixed species. At the top of the um, predatory scale, there's the frigate birds, and they are very large and very threatening looking. Then there's the boobies, green-footed boobies, incredibly fluffy chicks. You've never seen anything as fluffy as this. And we have to keep outside of this rope enclosure here so we don't disturb anyone. And the boat is back there behind us in the anchorage. And there's a load of tourists just getting off a boat, coming ashore or going snorkeling or something. I don't they're coming here at the moment. It's just amazing. Some of the chicks were playing with nest material. Some were learning to stretch their wings. Some were getting ready to fly. And some thought they already could. It was fascinating to watch the dynamics of this colony. The grooming, the doting parents, and the bird calls. It was also a privilege to have access to a place like this and be able to get so close to a wildlife spectacle we had never imagined we'd see in the flesh. adventure would be an underwater one. After donning new stinger suits and snorkeling gear in the shallows, we headed off the back of the boat for a short swim to the coral bommies just off the mooring balls. Whether below the water, on the sand cay, or in the skies above, Michaelmas Cay had exceeded any expectations we might have had. Granted, when we first arrived, I was somewhat taken aback by the time restrictions on going ashore. Initially, I wondered what possible impact the handful of cruising yachts calling in overnight could have by comparison to the boatloads of day trippers brought out from Cairns. But when I sat beside those beautiful seabirds the next morning, knowing this place was home for up to 20,000 breeding pairs, and when I saw firsthand the fragility of their environment, like the pieces of plastic incorporated in their nests, mankind's impact on nature really hit home, and I felt utterly grateful to be allowed here at all. Both Michaelmas and Sudbury Cays epitomised what we had sailed north for in this La Nina summer and in fact what people pack up their whole lives and go cruising for full stop. Best of all, these coral caves are just two of the jewels in Queensland's coastal crown, otherwise known as the Great Barrier Reef. For me though, 
The star of the show will always be our boat. Brilliant by nature as well as by name, it's our sturdy Kelly Peterson 44 that enables us to reach destinations like these. Yes, at 45 years old, she's high maintenance and a labour of love. But as this mid-refit voyage was reaffirming, she's so worth it.